Welcome to the Business Storyteller Podcast by PictoChart. This is a series of conversations with inspiring leaders and entrepreneurs to share their knowledge and experience in storytelling for their business. If you're curious to learn how the art of storytelling can make an impact on your business and brands, the Business Storyteller Podcast is for you. Hi there, and thank you for listening to the Business Storyteller Podcast. My name is Wilson, and I'm your host for today's episode. In today's episode, we'd like to uncover why visual communication is important for storytelling. And I'm delighted to be joined by the expert guest, Machik, who is the Managing Director of Explain Visually, a business savvy visual thinking agency. With his wealth of experience, Machik will be sharing his insights on this topic today. Hi, Machik. Welcome to the Business Storyteller Podcast, and I'm so excited to have you with us today. How are you doing? Hey, uh, I'm doing fine. I'm also very happy that uh, I got an invitation from you. Uh, so I can elaborate a little bit on uh, what I do. Like, uh, you know, I was looking for an interesting tagline for our agency, and I, I came up with this like we are an agency that helps you get understood mm. by the clients by the employees yeah. uh, by a, any any stakeholders uh, and apart from that i'm also creator of uh, luminous it's an independent project where i visualize words best ideas quotes and mental models and i share it on twitter okay so if you want to you can take a look Nice. It's just a for fun project. I, I, I don't earn anything <laughs> uh, f- from this. And I advise startups from time mm. to time as well. Okay. So how long have you been in this industry and how do you get to where you are at Explain Visually? Well, my visual communication journey has been pretty long. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> for most of my life, I thought about visual communication like most people. That is yeah. basically about choosing nice colors, icons and logos. And then it's, you know, that's enough. Uh, I wasn't living in the cave, though, so I knew about infographics. Uh, but I thought that their primary role is to visualize data, not ideas. So you could mm. see, for example, how many cars has Tesla produced compared to Toyota, or you could see an illustration of all species that died because of global warming. But uh, then in 2013, I read an article by Tim Urban called Why Generation Y UPs Are Unhappy. And uh, it, it was posted on a now very famous blog, Wait But Why. Mm-hmm. And uh, Tim used stick figures and very simple drawings to explain how our huge life expectations and peer pressure can make us unhappy. I just remained an avid reader of this blog. I, I never thought I could do something like this myself or, or work in this industry yet. Uh, then I worked in a high-tech telecom company called IS Wireless. That's pretty big right now, by the way. And they had very complicated products. So <laughs> I was responsible for marketing and sales. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you work in marketing, you need to understand what you're selling because otherwise, you know, you cannot do it properly. And the products I was selling was like LTE physical layer simulator for R&D. So, you know, it was very challenging because I didn't have telecommunications background. Uh, So (laughs) uh, we used a lot of technical graphs and it was pretty new to me. And then I started to understand, okay, you can use visuals to communicate very complex thing in a way that's easy to digest. And it's easy to digest even for a business person, not technical person. And it was, you know, eureka moment for me. And after that, I joined Explained Visually, where I was employee number one. Uh, Yeah, and then I learned that you could use visuals to explain everything, like, you know, from tech products to strategy of a rocket engine factory, or compliance procedures of a national lottery. Like, you know, we've done so many projects that I learned that visual is a, visuals are extremely universal tool for mm. communication. Wow. That sounds like a great wealth of experience you've had, uh, especially being the first employee of Explain Visually. So for someone like you who've been in the industry for some time, I'm sure you've seen 
uh, the rise of visual communication. Now, if I'm to ask you this question, why is visual communication so important at the present time and why should we care about this? What would you mm -hmm. say to that? I think it's important because the world gets more and more complex and the products we buy are very abstract. Mm. So for example, if you ask your grandparents what products they buy, they would tell you, well, I buy a bread, I buy a desk, I buy a car. You know, these are all things that you can see and touch. They are very tangible. But, you know, today's products are not tangible. They are very abstract, like paying for a subscription to stock with photos, like, you know, having an app on your phone to hail rides or yeah. social media or cloud, like try to explain it to your grandma, like good luck, you know, uh, <laughs> because, you know, for us, they are pretty normal because we, you know, we get used to them. Mm. But some time ago, we were like grannies ourselves. Like, you know, Twitter, for example, had to use explainer video to make it clear that they are not Facebook clone. You know, <laughs> and, you yeah. know, it was like 2007 or something like that. And Slack had to educate people like how are they are different than email, you know, yeah. and, and that they are not just like, you know, a chat that, that you had on websites in the 90s. And they were, you know, pretty not robust and even if you look at the first iphone ads you know everyone remembers okay there was steve jobs on this mac conference and then he was you know uh saying a very nice story but if you look at first iphone ads you have a black background an iphone and a hand mm -hmm. and hand clicks music and the voiceover says this is your music mm -hmm. the hand clicks safari and says this is your web the hand clicks email and says, this is your email. And ding, ding, oh, this is your call. And all of this you can have in an iPhone, you know? And today, like, you wouldn't make an ad like that because, you know, everyone knows what's an iPhone. But yep. at this very early stage, you had to explain to people what the hell is that? And, <laughs> you know, every day now we have thousands of new innovative products mm -hmm. and they need to be explained. And uh, I may be biased, but I believe <laughs> that the best way to explain them is to do it visually. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't end here. Like some strategies are very abstract. Like if you want to tell your employees, okay, we want to make a digital transformation. Like what the hell is digital transformation? You know, it's like a buzzword. Mm -hmm. So with visuals, you can make it very tangible. Yeah. You can you can show people examples, how will it work, what will change, what won't, and so on. And also the same with procedures. They are also very, very abstract. And yeah, like and I think you know, we all experience the power of visuals, but we sort of don't remember that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if you go to the school, you, you probably will have, you know, a food pyramid, you know. You have to eat, you know, this amount of bread, this amount of oils, this amount of sugar. Like millions of people have seen it because it was summarized in a nice visual form. But yeah. imagine that you, that the teacher asks you, oh, these are free articles about nutrition that you have to read. Like, you know, kids wouldn't do it. And, you know, even though this food pyramid is, all, as far as I know, outdated for a few years now, people still use it because it's very sticky. It's very easy to just, you know, digest this data and, okay, this is a pyramid. Okay, I, I know what I have to do. And yeah, I think this is why it's important, but I, I have also two other ideas. Like one of them is that our, you know, life is not that simple. You know, our grandparents, you know, their life was like, okay, you go to work, you cook a dinner, maybe you watch a TV. And then you go for a walk and visit friends and they happen to be at home. Like, you know, you just ring a bell and your friends are there. Like, try to do it today. Like, it's almost impossible because, you know, your friend would be on yoga class or they will go to the new Korean restaurant or, you know, they are picking up their kids from the coding school so they can be better prepared for the digital future. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you know, our, our, we are very busy and our lives get pretty fragmented. So we need this information pills. We need something that's very easy to digest. And yeah. visuals are very easy to digest. Mm -hmm. And yeah, on top of that, you know, we get distracted pretty often. 
uh, you know, when we started, I told you that I'm going to mute my phone because otherwise, you know, you get like emails, you get like, you know, notifications from the apps, you get calls all the time. And, you know, if this attention is so fragile, it's you need a tool that helps you to get it and hold it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's easy to get attention. You can just, you know, make a click bite article. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you have a headline, people click it, you get the attention. But the main challenge is how to hold the attention for a long yeah. period of time so we can communicate. And, it, you know, if, if you watch the movies from the 80s, you might have an idea that they are a little bit boring because you have very long scenes. You know, yeah. you have a scene like, you know, for a minute, nothing happens and two characters are just talking. Mm -hmm. And if you show this movie to, you know, someone from the younger generation, they might be, well, oh, it's so boring, like nothing happens. They are, they are just talking. <laughs> and uh, on the other hand, you have TikTok where they change the camera angle like every three seconds. Yeah. And they do it on purpose because... If we see the change, it's easy for us to, you know, follow the the plot. And mm -hmm. if you look at, you know, new movies like The Avengers, you know, it's very fast in terms of how the scenes change. Trying to wrap it up, like <laughs> I, I believe that you know, visuals allows us to make abstract products and concepts easy to understand mm. and communicate them fast and in a more engaging way, so people can really follow. I think it defined it very well, helping us to see the history of it and also the relevance of how it used to be in the past and in the, in the present. So I like the example of trying to explain uh, to my grandparents, how does it look like to subscribe to an app today? And yeah, I think visuals does so much that we possibly didn't think that it would be so helpful that it has been a part of our norm every day. Uh, but without it, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be able to define a lot of abstract things. So thanks yeah. for sharing that really good uh, history uh, and also the analogy that you gave to us. <laughs> so you, you've been in this for some time and uh, Explain Visually itself has um, a very remarkable uh, amount of projects they've completed, more than 300. And based on your observation and experience, how do you see visual communication affecting the future of businesses and brands? So we talked about the present mm -hmm. uh, earlier. Now, what do you think is going to affect the future through mm -hmm. visual communication? First of all, we have product side. So, you know, many products lost because they were poorly communicated. Mm -hmm. Because so people just couldn't understand the value behind them. Yeah. And, you know, didn't buy the product. And with visuals, uh, it's easier to communicate the value. So there's mm -hmm. less risk that the product won't work well because it's misunderstood. And on the other hand, it may be brutal because you couldn't say, oh, it's great, but they just don't understand me. Because, you know, if you communicate it clearly and they understand you and they don't want to buy it from you, well, maybe the product itself isn't that great. So I, I think it will be easier to innovate or at least maybe not even innovate, but to communicate innovation mm -hmm. in the yeah. future. Mm -hmm. And it will be easier to get alignment among teams because you know if you can communicate in a crystal clear way like what's your strategy what's your goal people for people it will be easier to engage in mm. in, in your project and also you know visual is less uh, culturally biased so yeah, when sure. you have international teams for them, it's easier to understand, like when something is up, typically it means it's better than when it's down, you know, when mm -hmm. something is big, it's, you know, it means that it's, uh, there's more of it. And, and yeah. this is pretty universal, like colors are, are pretty culturally biased, you know, like white is a color of grief in, in Japan, but, mm. and, and, and not in the West, but uh, when it comes to shapes, they are pretty universal. So I think it will be easier for teams to get alignment. Yeah, that's a really good point, especially on how visual is very universal. And I think that perhaps could be uh, throughout even the future. It's pretty much the same. So yeah, thanks for sharing your insight on that based on your experience. Now, I also know that for some of our listeners who are listening to this, they're probably perhaps a smaller business or brand, right? And they have yet to embrace visual communication as part of their marketing strategy because perhaps it's a bit too costly. It just takes up too much skills and expertise that you do not have. 
But mm -hmm. based on your experience, what is your advice to help them to at least get started somewhere with visual communication? So first of all, you need to know your audience. Like it's very universal in marketing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because you will communicate differently with Gen Z teenagers than boomer banking executives. Like you know, this is pretty <laughs> obvious. And it's obvious in terms of words and in terms of visuals as well. Uh, the second thing is your goal. Do you want to educate, sell or inspire? And, you know, it will define how much text you will have, what do you want to highlight? What colors will serve best? Uh, and the third thing is a form. If you're a small business, you have a, like, a wide variety of options here. Like, for example, like when we've done an animation for IKEA that presented their digital transformation strategy, we've done it in, in a cartoon style because we wanted to make it more human and nice to watch because the subject itself was very, you know, technological and abstract so okay. we had this you know like a cartoon explaining what are the goals like what do we want to achieve and so on but um, you can also go for you know this vector toned down graphics that are more look more serious and give you a more serious vibe and and this is also an option uh, but um, you can also use diagrams like as I told you, in this high-tech uh, company, we use diagrams. And very often, if you can diagram the thing that people sort of understand, but not exactly, if you make a diagram of it, it can go viral mm -hmm. because you make something super clear that everyone tried to really, really understand. Yeah. Uh, but you can also go, if you have like zero marketing budget, and I highly advise it, you can go for memes. <laughs> and it's, I'm not joking. Like I really seen a, like, you know, two days ago, a job uh, posting about a meme creator that paid 80,000 bucks a year. Wow. Yeah. For a meme artist. And, you know, uh, there are people on Twitter or even on LinkedIn that use a lot of memes to explain different subjects and they do it pretty well. But obviously, it depends on your audience. You know, if you, if you target banking executives, maybe it will be harder to use memes. But it's not impossible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, like it's a very low budget option. You just need you know a, a person who is good at internet. The most important one thing is the message. Like, what do you want for them to understand? And the thing is, if you want to make a visual, you need to really thoroughly understand the thing you are talking about. Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to draw something that you have, you know, this vogue understanding. And we could all experience that in a math, you know, classes where you try to, you know, make a, like a matrix or, or draw some uh, Cartesian uh, diagram or, or whatever. And, and you didn't understand it. And it was very hard to make it work. You know, memes here are a great example. Like memes are funny because yeah. they can describe our reality in one picture. They are very on point. But... You cannot create a good meme unless you really understand the reality. Unless, you know, you have to make an observation first and then you create a visual. And mm -hmm. the same with business like visuals. Those are really good advice, especially the one with memes. So I guess there's no <laughs> excuse for anyone not to even try out visual communication because that's the simplest form, it's low cost. You, there are so many meme generators out there as well. Uh, so, really interesting insight about. How people are also hiring for a meme generator uh, these days. You mentioned just now earlier that you've been with Explain Visually uh, since uh, it began. So since it was founded, uh, you were the first one. Uh, so in relation to visual communication for business, how has visual communication itself benefited Explain Visually ever since it was founded? Well, we're in this nice spot that, you know, if we make a good, great visual for our client, it's sort of like an ad for us. You know, we can use <laughs> it to promote our services. So we are like cheating a little bit here because most companies cannot have this kind of option. But uh, we use a lot of visuals in our offers. So mm. the client can understand why we are different from other options on the market. So the client can understand the value behind it. We, we have nice timelines. We have also a pyramid of you know, our process, like what we do and what other companies do. Uh, we use a lot of infographics in our articles 
So they are cartoonish. So we have a, you know, an artist drawing an infographic to make an article easier to understand. And thanks to that, we have content for social media because then you can just, you know, put the infographic there. Uh, but it's also, you know, about the attitude. Mm. Even if we give feedback to each other, very often we do it visually. So people like to draw something, you know, or like even sometimes we use a sheet of paper and we just, you know, draw something and say, yeah, I want it to look like that. Or yeah. we use, you know, more professional approach, like we use iPad Pro or whatever mm -hmm. to, to make it more... Um, like to make it easier to grasp. And that's how I got my insight about alignment of the teams, because, you know, when you make it visual, it's, it's idiot proof. Like you cannot make a mistake there, you know. Yeah, I appreciate the fact you shared. It's not only for marketing purposes, but alignment of teams. So I think you all really embody, explain visually, living and breathing <laughs> uh, visuals, uh, even in your meetings and giving your feedback. That is really interesting. And I think that's something that uh, a lot of businesses and brands can consider as a doing. Um, as simple as just taking down a piece of paper and like jotting down, just drawing some of their feedbacks. Now, so you all have also worked with a lot of notable brands. Uh, so I've seen you've worked with brands such as Revolut, uh, Carlsberg, Pfizer, Ikea, Nestle, Tesco, so many more uh, with hundreds of projects being done. Um, and for all of this, I'm sure there are certain uh, tips or similarities that you mm -hmm. all uh, think about whenever you work with them. Now, if you are speaking to someone who wants to learn how to do visual communication rightly, what would be your three tips for them? Okay, so adding to what I said already, it, I will highlight once again mm -hmm. that yeah. you need to understand the subject thoroughly because uh, I will <laughs> repeat it like 100 times a day just to yeah. make it sure because it's very hard to explain something without that. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is looking for a metaphor like, yeah okay for example many people use cloud services today like yeah. we use google drive or maybe amazon web services but when you think about it there's no such thing as cloud That's these true. are heavy servers in concrete data centers around the world it's yeah. pretty far from the cloud in the sky <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> we use the cloud as a metaphor to really grasp that your servers are somewhere there and not in your office. That's true. And you should find such metaphors for the products, you know, projects or procedures. It can also be an analogy, you know, like you can say that, you know, uh, Spotify is a Netflix for music. Mm. And people are, okay, okay, I, I get what, what's that about. And yeah. so metaphors and analogies are very helpful in visuals because then it can be uh, very easy for a person to, to grasp what, what do you want to communicate. And the third thing is obviously a storytelling, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and that's in the title of this podcast. So I would yeah. feel very bad if I haven't mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the visuals are a great tool to make your story stick. Mm. And we see it in movies, obviously. Uh, we see it in comic books and we see it in normal books as well. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, I, I, I read Lord of the Rings, uh, like, you know, uh, now and, well, not right now, but, you know, uh, now and, you know, you open the book and you have descriptions like hobbits are small and chubby. Yeah. And Gandalf is tall. He has a long, gray beard and a very stern look. And Mordor is dark, full of clouds and evil looking mountains. And these are all visuals. Yep. They have been painted in our heads by the author and without them it would be almost impossible to follow the plot mm. because you couldn't visual you know you couldn't visualize what's going on so your yeah. mind will wander away mm -hmm. so you can write your story like tolkien and use visuals or you can show it like you know stan lee done with you know spider-man or you can show it with a movie or, or with infographics but without visuals it's very like it's I believe it's impossible for a story to, to, to stick. You don't need to draw them. You don't need to you know, design them. You, you can use your words, but you need to create these visuals for, so people can really see it uh, in their heads. And that's, by the way, why it's so hard to read the math textbooks. 
Like yes. you don't have any visuals. It's just you know logical stream of information. And if you look at many corporate materials that I, I work a lot with, they look like that. Like, you know, unless there's a person that really understand that want uh, and want to make them more easy to digest. It's you know just like twenty bullet points. <laughs> And, you know, uh, people, especially now when you communicate virtually, so you don't, you know, sit in the same room, they can, you know, open Facebook in another tab or LinkedIn or just, you know, buy new things on Alibaba or whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I believe these three things, like, you know, understanding of the subject, finding metaphor or analogy and storytelling. Yeah. These are the things that I, I find the most important. Mm. And I wholeheartedly agree with you about how without visual storytelling, uh, visual storytelling is almost impossible uh, for, yeah. for, the, for people to actually understand what's going on. So I like your uh, point on metaphor and analogy. I find it really helpful. Never thought about that before, but that's a really, really good one that you mentioned. Uh, we are coming to almost the end of our podcast. Uh, and I'm also sure that you have been inspired by a lot of uh, businesses and brands that you've seen mm -hmm. from the outside uh, other than your clients. So perhaps could you share with us um, what are some of your favorite examples of businesses and brands who are doing visual communication successfully mm -hmm. this time? So the first one is uh, like my top of mind. It's Slack. Mm. Mm. Like I really like how they explained how they are different from the email and how they help to streamline communication so you don't, you know, you don't have like 20 different subjects, like you have an email, but you have, you know, a channel for one project, a thread for a like mini conversation inside the project. Yep. And uh, they used, uh, like, it, it's pretty old. I don't think they have it on their website uh, now, but they used the metaphor with balls that were just going through different tunnels so they, you know, they, they, so you had, you know, red ball going through red tunnel and green ball mm. going from through green tunnel and yellow through the yellow tunnel. So it really nicely illustrated how they can streamline the, the communications in a company. Yeah. And even if you go to their website today, they just show their tool, how it looks like, but in a very nice human and fun way. So uh there's like a screenshot from slack but you know with some people saying very funny things and yeah and th 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 this is a, a role model for me uh the other thing is uh, gong this is a b2b company they they deliver a software that analyzes all your sales calls and mm -hmm. tells you what works so you can say okay after 5,000 sales calls, we know that when clients these questions, we have like 10% higher chances of closing a deal. Mm -hmm. So like the, this is a nice product, but you know, they target salespeople, like, you know, VP of sales, but also, you know, normal salespeople. And these people are pretty relaxed and straightforward. They're, you know, non-bullshit type of people so their style is very relaxed mm -hmm. they use memes even though they are multi-billion dollar company they use memes oh. even on linkedin <laughs> really no. like, yeah they have they use gifs they have okay. nice colored charts and you know mm -hmm. they, they use gifs and memes and they have like thousands sometimes hundreds like almost every time but sometimes even thousands of reactions and it's oh. not easy to get this kind of engagement on LinkedIn company yeah, page because, yeah. you know, these are, in most cases, pretty boring. So they really know what they are doing. And the third one is Replit. It's like an environment for software developers, something yeah. like GitHub, more mm -hmm. or less. And, you know, developers like this retro kind of stuff, you know, old computers and so on. Yes. So they went for this dynamic, fun, you know, communication and... Uh, if you go to their website, there are some things that look like a video game from the 90s. And, mm. you know, if you type in YouTube, uh, the video, it's called Announcing Replit Apps. So 
this is like a video game from the 90s or maybe even 80s and and they announced the apps you know with, with this kind of visual and, and it was very nice you know for this kind of audience there's also one i don't think it's a business but it's more like a fun project it's amazing thing it's called poolside fm it's yes. like this very retro 70s 80s like they post pictures from the 70s and 80s on their instagram they have a huge following and mm-hmm. um, even their app looks like an old computer yes. so you have to click something this is like a beautiful understanding of visual communications and i learned i think yesterday that they got nominated to the apple design awards wow so it's remarkable if, Yeah, if Apple tells you're good at design, probably you are. <laughs> yeah, definitely the standard of a uh, design. Yeah, I've heard of Pulsar FM. Uh, we also use it uh, in Picture Chat. Share it, especially our developers. They love it because of the retro feeling that it gives. Uh, yeah. And yeah, like you mentioned Slack, and I, I'm just recalling like five years ago when we started using Slack, it didn't make sense at all. Like, yeah. How how do we use this thing? And now it's been used by like I don't know almost every top companies in the world. So visual communication has clearly helped them to define their product better. Well, thanks for sharing so many valuable insights with us today, and I'm really so glad to have you on this episode to help us to understand why visual communication is important for storytelling. I think coming from an expert like yourself, it, it makes a lot of sense uh, for our listeners today. And before we conclude this episode, uh, I'd love to ask you some fun questions, and I do this with every guest. Uh, these questions mm-hmm. are related to storytelling. And I think it's okay. a great way for our listeners to actually learn what inspires you. So, are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, go on. All right. So, my first question for you is this: What is your favorite movie? I really love Lord of the Rings, the mm. director's cut, like this version that lasts like fifteen hours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> like the, this, yeah, fifteen hours long version of Lord of the Rings. I I, I really love this movie. I mean, it, it's done well on all the, like, yeah, it looks like perfect. But from the storytelling point of view, I think mm-hmm. the best movie I've ever seen, apart from you know these very serious movies, yeah, uh, like you know, like Shawshank Redemption or, or something like that, I really do believe that Avengers: Infinity War mm. is the best entertainment style <laughs> movie. In terms of storytelling, ever, yeah, and this is why I, I I will tell you why. When you get the opening scene, mm-hmm. they are in a spacecraft, and you know you have Thor who just defeated you know the very powerful, uh, like his sister <laughs> on on his planet. He's like super powerful, the god of thunder, and so on. Yeah. You have Hulk, who is also like the most powerful person in uh, in the Avengers team. Mm-hmm. But you know, Thor and Hulk sometimes debate over that. And yeah. uh, <laughs> you have uh, Loki, who is also like super powerful. The whole Avengers team couldn't beat him. Yeah. So you think, okay, these are you know the most badass characters in the whole universe, and they get beaten up like kids by Thanos. Mm-hmm. So from the storytelling point of view, you see, okay, I thought these are you know super badass characters, and I would see, okay, if he has defeated them so easily, how on earth are they going to win with him? Yeah, so you have so much tension there because you know you're like, there's no way they are going to beat him. Like, like you know, like if three most powerful people from their team has lost, like no way. Yeah, and now you open this curiosity gap in your audience, and they are like, yes. "Damn, I really want to see how they are going to do it," and then yeah. you have the whole movie. So uh, wow. for me, like this opening is a storytelling masterpiece. Like, mm. yeah, yeah, maybe it's pretty nerdy of me, but yeah, I, I really do believe that. Yeah, I mean, it's ten years in the making for this whole uh, storyline to come together. And I remember the yeah. excitement of everyone watching the the premiere yeah. and everyone going crazy over it. Uh, recently, they celebrated, I think, their second year as well uh, of, of yeah. Infinity War. So amazing! Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the thing you're mentioning, yeah, it, uh, that's also totally true. Like 
how they connected all these stories, like yes. I think like 20 movies mm -hmm. in yep. one, how yeah. these plots, these characters, how they made the dynamic between some of them, some of them liked each other, some of them not, some of them inspired each other and so on. So this is a masterpiece. Like, you know, they won't get an Oscar because, you know, Oscars never goes to this kind of movies, but <laughs> yeah, I really do believe that they should get an Oscar for screenwriting. Mm, yeah, I mean, the amount of fans that they have uh, following this franchise is a testament yeah. itself. It's a really cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that is movie, right? That is one form mm -hmm. of storytelling. Uh, what about your favorite book? You mentioned a few about books. Uh, so what would be your favorite book? I have two. Mm, I don't know which one should I choose. And I, I will choose the one that's more <laughs> like, mm, that's easier to read for an average person because the one that I really like is pretty like niche so maybe mm -hmm. not many people will like it but this is a um, this is like a series of books it's called the first law hmm. it, it, it was written by a by by Joe Abercrombie the British writer and it's a fantasy book but it's something like if you mix Lord of the Rings like this you know the whole epicness of, of the story and so on with more realistic maybe cynical view from house of cards mm -hmm. you will get this book like this is a very very interesting in terms of you know the characters the plot it's not so obvious it destroys a lot of tropes like you know if you have a hero he's not like captain america that you know yeah. he's super nice and everybody loves him but he has you know his bad behaviors and you know yeah one of the main characters just killed his friend just and, and you're like what the hell you know it, more, more or less like you know in in a game of thrones mm. where it's so unexpectedly you know everyone can die in every scene so this yep, is more yep. like the, that okay nice yeah. well uh, i'm sure our listeners would love to check out some of your recommendations uh they've given to us now, I'm just going to wrap this up by asking you some quick fire questions. So okay. basically, it's just a this or that question, uh, and you have less than five seconds to respond to them. You ready? Okay. Okay. All right. So my first question to you is this. Would you prefer theater or cinema? Cinema. Cinema. Okay. Um, now this is the second one. Would you prefer reading or writing? Reading, but reading? hard question. <laughs> this is probably a more tricky one. Social media, would it be Facebook or Twitter for you? Twitter. Twitter? Okay. Um, this is an interesting one because I know you like to watch movies. What about Netflix or YouTube? Uh, Netflix because you have longer, you know, you can get really sucked into the world. YouTube is more fragmented. Yes. And I think you do series very well as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is for like all the movie fans out there. Um, Avatar or Star Wars? Well, Star Wars, because I haven't watched Avatar. <laughs> oh, you have to. <laughs> yeah, like th this is on my list for, I don't know, like 10 years, because I, I think even more. But, uh, you know, I haven't watched it when it was in cinema, so mm. I couldn't see it in 3D. So then I yeah. felt, wow, I don't, want, I don't want to watch it in 2D because it would be, you know, it wouldn't be that cool. So yeah. <laughs> That's the reason why they, they have the highest crossing uh, film of all time. So, yeah. all right. And finally is this, uh, would you prefer like action uh, movie or would you prefer documentaries? Action movies. Action movies. Nice. Yeah. Well, that was fun. Uh, and I certainly enjoyed your responses. I'm sure our listeners uh, can also find out like what really inspires you as a visual communicator. So before we wrap up, I'm sure some of our listeners would like to stay connected with you. Uh, so how can they reach you? Okay, uh, well, you, you can type in Explain Visually in Facebook, Twitter, Google, I guess, as well, LinkedIn, and, and find us on, on social media, and also me, uh, Maciek Butkowski. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it will be hard to write it because it's, it's a Polish name, but it will be written in the title, I guess. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, you, you can also follow Luminous. This is my project on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I, I do it for fun and many people find it fun as well. So yes. I, I think this is the best way to, to stay in touch. Nice. Yeah. I'm really keen to check out Luminous. 
uh, and also for our listeners to also follow all the pages that you mentioned as well. So once again, thank you, Majik, for coming on this episode of the Business Storyteller Podcast. Uh, I'm really grateful for having you to share your insights with us today. And that's all for today's episode. And until the next one, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks a lot. It was very interesting and enjoyable. So I, I hope that our listeners will also <laughs> see it that way. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Thanks, Magic. Thank you. We hope you find this episode valuable. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out PictoChart for more visual storytelling tips. PictoChart is an easy to use visual content maker with more than 500 templates for you to choose from, ranging from infographic, presentation, report, social media graphic, and more. Join more than 8 million people who are already using PictoChart to craft amazing visual stories. That's all for today on the Business Storyteller Podcast, and we'll catch you at the next one.